Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, what is up? The King of Lightning is here today bringing you guys and gals one piece. What? Yeah, the One Piece War, chapter 830, He Who Gets Bet On. And here we have the cover page, Rayleigh, man, oh, Rayleigh, gambling. And he is reading the paper about Luffy, 500 million Berry Man art. Okay, so moving on from there, we're going straight into the chapter. No deviant art, I think? Huh, straight up. Because normally manga stream has like deviant art pictures before the chapter. For One Piece today, no, not the case. And here we have Jinbei. Straw Hat Luffy is a man. He's a man's man who will eventually change the world a few hours ago. So now we're in flashback. Who is he talking to? Oh shit, the fishmen. A whole bunch of them. He may still be a bit wet behind the ears, but I sincerely believe that the one who will rule the seas will not be any of the four Yonko, but Straw Hat Luffy himself. But Luffy doesn't want to rule. He wants to just be free. He's all about freedom. Freedom! Now, that being said, we have all the fishermen right here, even Watasume, the big dude. I would like to aid this man in his endeavors. I wish to board his ship and sacrifice this life of mine for him if need be. I assume he is a member of the Straw Hat crew, or at least he's going to appeal to his crew first. I assume that these actions will in end result in a fight for the true freedom of the fishman race as well. Luffy already has 5,600 some odd men at his disposal. You wanna include the Sun Pirates in there, it's like, fuck man, Jesus, Luffy. When it comes to the final arc, Luffy's already ready. He, he has the troops, he has the numbers. He's already ready. So adding the Sun Pirates, he's already ready ready. Uh, mm. Luffy ready. Most of the Fishman guys are like, you know what, Jinbei, it's cool. You've been talking about Luffy for a while now. You might as well do what you feel like doing. So they understand that Jinbei, this entire time, he has been thinking about the interests of those around him first and foremost. When it came to being a Shichibukai, when it came to being one of Big Mom's subordinates, when it came to being an officer in Neptune's army, and so on and so forth. So Jinbei has done a lot for those around him. And now the Sun Pirates are telling him, Captain, be a little bit selfish, all right? From this point forward, you should do what you want to do. Do, do whatever, whatever the fuck do you, you want to do? do. <laughs> this is all meant to be advice. Seriously? Okay, so first of all, this guy, Aladini, that's his name. That's number one. Number two, he's the vice captain of the Sun Pirates. I forgot, because honestly, eh, whatever. Like, this guy has been irrelevant for a while, so whatever. But, eh, FaceTime, let me... Okay, boom, there we go. So, yeah, again, this guy... Rocking the Guan Yu beard. He's been irrelevant for a while now, so I didn't really give a fuck. But that's his name. That's who he is. If Jimmy is gonna stop being one of Big Mom's subordinates, it's gonna put him in a pickle because apparently he has tied the knot with Miss Praline, who I'm assuming is one of Big Mom's daughters, and is now a member of Big Mom's immediate family and all. Really? So one of Big Mom's daughters married a fishman? That's that's what? I mean, then again, there are half fishmen. So once again, that's the dude. That's interesting. I mean, Big Mom even trying to gain control of the fishmen, not only through a union with Jinbei, but also by having the vice captain of the Sun Pirates marry into her family. Wait, this is her? What? 29th daughter of Charlotte family, Charlotte Parling, hammerhead shark, half mermaid. And she's fucking huge. How did Big Mom give birth to this big mom chill? Like, what's next? Like, giant children now? Like, she accepts with some giant dude? And then, oh, she has a half-giant child? Fuck me. Maybe she raped the Tontata dude. Oh, oh, God, no, stop it. Stop it. No. No, no, no. That's horrifying. So, that is the 29th daughter of the Charlotte family. And you can see her compared to the other fishmen. Yeah, she's pretty large. She's not like she's not like Neptune's daughter, Shirahoshi, but she's still fairly large nonetheless. And that's because I guess Big Mom is huge, and so that would run it in the family. <laughs> Dude, man. Okay, so here she is. Like, listen. Like, I'll choose you over Mama any day of the week. That's so cute, Kawaii. Hugging him and shit. <laughs> Such passionate love. Love is in the air. Apparently. <laughs> this dude is getting smothered. Get him the fuck out of there. <laughs> this 
this man needs to go to a bar and just <laughs> drink it off, bro. Drink it off. God damn. Gee. She laughs like Arlong. Ultimately, you can try and leave, but, and I quote, having said that, not a single soul who was brave enough to utter such words has lived to see the day. Cause Big Mom, again, she's the insane big bitch. When you say those words, basically Big Mom, I'm gonna dip, then you actually dip, like you just bail. So yeah, you leave at the speed of light. You pay Kizaru to hitch a ride, like Kizaru, I need you to be here at this point in time when I'm talking to Big Mom. So you say Big Mom, she's like, what? You're like, I'm out, peace bitch. And then you jump on Kizaru and then you dip at the speed of light. That's how it rolls. And now we're back to Whole Cake Island, the capital sweet city. Oh, his name changed. Muscat is now Moscato. Uh, that's, that's wine. Like Italian wine? Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. Mm. What the hell's this swamp thing doing to this kid? This kid's crying like, no, Sir Moscato, please don't leave us. Move aside, kid. Like, what the? Bro, seriously? And this swamp dude, like, what's, what's going on here? Come on, Big Mom, don't tell me that you gave birth to this thing. This thing is like living diarrhea. No, 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 no. That's nasty. You know what? Let me let me just continue. So this guy with the hat is called Sir Montdor, asking if Jimmy is gonna be killed. He's talking to these. What are these weird black? What the fuck? Okay, they're these weird, like blackish kind of weird shaped, open mouth eye people. What is going on here? I don't know. You see for yourself. It's kind of weird. These black things that are just like alive. I'm confused. Fuck it. And he's talking to them and he's saying, do not leave behind even a single second. Do you hear me? That sounds pretty weird. Do not leave behind even a single second. There may be some time shit going on here. Uh-oh. Okay, so this is Big Mom's, I guess, living area in Sweet City. Why, boss? Please don't leave. Why must you go? Silence. Big Mom's eating some things. Do not ask those who wish to leave their reasons. How uncouth. I don't give a damn about his reasons. He is a pirate. Living freely is of utmost importance. But there's a butt in there, you nasty big bitch. Look at her. Oh. Well. No. No, 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 no. I'm hoping one day, Mugga D. Luffy takes you out with maximum force. The first woman that Sanji kicks, if ever, may be Big Mom. And I'll be all for that 150,000%. Look at that face. Ugh. No, please. Please. Like, could you imagine? Okay, could you imagine, like, Sanji doing, like, the attack where he changed your bone structure to Big Mom? That would be kind of cool. What the fuck is this? Really, Big Mom? I'm, dude, come, it's people. She's so warped. Big Mom's talking about how, yeah, you're a pirate. However, having the bond between one's child revoked is shameful to a parent. Your departure would cause a huge void and cost me a valuable and powerful resource. And then Jinbei says, well, sure. Then she goes, don't you sure me. Don't, don't you sure me. Ugh. Please, get the fuck out of that noise. It's only fair that you lose something valuable as well. That's the only way we could call this a fair trade. Wouldn't you agree? He's leaving. Oh my, trading what? Bring in the roulettes. Now then, what exactly will it be that you'll be losing? And here she has this roulette. I see a head, I see legs, I see an arm. Are you fucking serious? I see 100. Oh, wait a second. I think... Don't tell me those are years of life. Big Mom, you fucking insane bitch. Like, it, no. No, 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 no. King Lane does not prove. At all. Never. No. 10, 100, 1,000? Really? Who? Who, Big Mom? Who? That's some void century shit. Fuck Big Mom. Fuck Big Mom. Honestly. And we're gonna cut away from that now? Really? Back to Luffy and company? Come on. Oda. Dick teasing. We're at Luffy and company. They're in between Biscuits and Nuts Island. And what these ants are, I don't know, but maybe they'll explain it here. But, but here's where they are from a map standpoint. And then that's where they are right now, near the shore of an island. I'm assuming Biscuits, given where the... Eh, who, who knows? And again, we have these ants that are on the ground. And they have to leave because if they don't leave, then more ants are going to come and attack them. Really? Oh, no, they're not ashore. They're on the ocean. But the ocean in this area is made out of sweet syrup that freezes over at night. Or it's extremely thick at night. That's crazy. Pedro, I once had my ship eaten down to the last plank by these ants. Yo, these ants. 
They remind me of those ants in the fact that Pedro just said that. How he had his ship eaten down to the last plant. They remind me of those ants in Strong World. Where like they would consume like the flesh of anything to the bone like an instant. Here we go, some backstory. Pedro used to be a pirate just like Peckham's. I honestly didn't know any better at the time. I thought I was simply an explorer, but they ended up putting a bounty on my head. I only accompanied Peckham's midway. Huh. I'm only sharing this with you because of the trust that has been built. But we were on a journey to discover poneglyphs. Really? Peckham's and Pedro. We just wanted to be an asset to our master, Nikomamushi, in any way that we could. The day we finally stepped foot into Big Mom's territory would be the last of our journey. The truth is, I've fallen here once before. And he has a serious ass face on. Okay, this is some backstory that I do kind of like because the Mink are very fascinating, and the fact that their entire like story existence is so quintessential to the story itself via like the Roponoglyph, via Zunisha itself, via the Kozuki clan, and so on and so forth. So the Mink are very fascinating. He and Peckham's were on a journey to find Poneglyphs for Master Nekomamushi, meaning that Peckham's was on Nekomamushi's side of things, the Guardians, of not the galaxy, but the forest, and how he had fallen in combat, I guess in combat, once before here. Go... Roger. Right here. I was told our duke and master showed you all the royal poneglyph. When I first heard of this, I could not believe my ears. Though you all are our saviors, the last time we showed that to outsiders who weren't members of the Kozuki clan was precisely 26 years ago. It feels like ages since we've shown the poneglyph to Gold D. Roger and his crew, the Pirate King. Afterwards, Roger made it to Raftel and became known as the Pirate King. I believe that Duke Inuarashi and Master Nekomamushi are seeing similarities between their crew and yours. They must be confident that you lot will become people who will end up needing the role Poneglyph. What will you do after you defeat Kaido? Don't make it sound so easy, bro! What? That's so far into the few. After that, you will surely need to make use of the role Poneglyph Big Mom possesses. Wait, so are you saying that he must first defeat Kaido and then fight against Big Mom. And though he is kind of saying it, yeah. After that, you will surely need to make use of the Roponoglyph Big Mom possess. And if this is the case, you will not have any better opportunity than this, seeing as how we've been able to sneak this far into her territory. So, I mean, Robin did say get a copy of the Roponoglyph, though knowing Luffy, he may just bring the whole damn thing right here. It would be wise for you to steal her Roponoglyph in addition to rescuing your crewmate Sanji. Oh, Pedro, this is your mission. When we arrive at the island, would you mind buying me a bit of time? I promise that I will successfully steal the Poneglyph this time this time round. So last time, on behest of Negomamushi and Inu Arashi, he was gonna steal the Poneglyph. But they fell, they lost, and now he's gonna succeed this time round with Luffy. Oh shit, they're here. Oh, thinking, yeah, they were between nuts and biscuits. Okay, all right, fine, fuck it. So it's morning. Wake up, guys, we're here, and here is Whole Cake Island. It's an actual cake. It's ginormous, so this is the island where a Yonko lives. Let's get a nice picture of Whole Cake Island. The capital of sugar. We see candles on it. We see a lot of frosting. I'm assuming that's frosting. We see whatever that is. We see fruits on top of this as well. So right here, yeah, Whole Cake Island. They're in. The tallest cake you can see in the distance is the castle where Big Mom currently resides. Yes, I've heard that that cape over there is the only location where security doesn't make their rounds. Bullshit. Trap. It's time to get baited into a trap. There's someone standing at the coast. They're about to set foot into the island where Yonko resides. Yeah, no, I'm smelling something funky, and it's not the sweets. It's a trap. I'm telling you. And that's it. We're done. So that's it. I'll see you guys and gals later. King Lightning, rate the video, comment, and subscribe as always. Peace. Have a nice goddamn day. And next week, we will see them get baited into a trap because the insane big bitch knows that Luffy is here. And I guarantee you, Purin. Mm-hmm.
Purin is following Big Mamu's orders. Have a nice day.